Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our Montanaro Home Church. Let us prepare our heart to heaven. Let's sing song today. Uh, 47 Angel we have heard on high. 47 Angels we have heard on high. Angels we have heard on high. Sweetly singing all the pains and the mountains in reply. Echo back the joyous chains. is actually really uh, very good. It's a very good literal translation, but because of that, the scansion doesn't work very well. You have to speak very fast to get to let the words in. And I'd like to, at the end of it, sing just the first verse in Korean. You can all join me if you know it, so you can hear the original Korean. So we'll sing the three verses, and then we'll sing a Korean verse, okay? And it's one of the most beautiful songs I've ever heard. It's a song that makes me feel like the fall never happened. That this is what we would be singing if the fall had never happened and we were living in a world of true love and with God at the center. Ding dong dang dong, drops of rain fall gently to the soil. Surging waves of the mighty ocean pack the golden sands. Floating in the sky, the moon goes right across my path. Lakes of snow and crystal pattern fall to hush the land. Oh, glorious Eden, garden of delight. In the beauty of creation, let us all rejoice. Let us all rejoice. From the towering mountain ranges, true men now emerge. From the streams of tears, water come their faithful wives. Cutting timber in the mounds, they join to build a house. Harvesting the ripe and grain, they bake the loaves of bread. Oh, glorious Eden, garden of delight. In the beauty of creation, let us all rejoice. Let us all rejoice. 
for ten thousand years forever our life shall go forth. Sons of every generation soon will fill the earth. Let us plow the field and sow it, laughing as we go. We shall be a mighty people in a world of light. Oh, glorious Eden, God in our delight. In the beauty of creation, let us all Such a nice feeling, doesn't it? <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Let us stand up, the great Heavenly Father, God, and children parents. Uh, this morning, uh, 2018, December 16, close to the Christmas, and uh, let us bow to Heavenly Father and, and children parents. Hello. Join to me, prayer. Sagashinum, Hananima, Bochi, Champonim, and Yashimonica. Most precious our Heavenly Father, God, and true parents. Good morning. We are gathered together in front of you to sincerely humbly bow to our head and uh, we can receive your guidance for the new week. We are so grateful that you created the world. The mountain is beautiful and tall and cold sometimes and wind is strong and the stream is uh, beautiful, the pure water coming from the mountain and the body that reflect the sun and the moon and the wind and uh, everything is created good. You created all things is good and beautiful. Sorry that we are the children. We are struggling to grow and mature like you. But uh, we didn't know how to grow up and uh, much mature to like you. Now that we receive in Christ, He returned this us to the uh, almost a hundred years ago. He lived and uh, so incredible life to giving truth to the all humankind and love and uh, He slept just three hours in the each day and speak to your word so long time. Sometimes he didn't sleep until one o'clock and then coming up three o'clock and then start, start the uh, teaching to the uh, uh, people. We are so grateful. He, his sweat and tear and blood was for the all humanity in the spiritual world and the physical world. We are receiving this new truth. Sometimes impact our heart and striking because so strong and pure and striking our heart to repent and report to you. Father, you are so grateful. You raised up the bar of the, the high and the standard, but yet we are not practically they're going to higher. We have to take our time to you giving our time to grow and mature in their own way. Because we are unique and we are different age and young 
and tall and small and all kind of dif different the phenomena we have and also in the world language is different and culture is different and the, the history is different but we are ahead of the, the sphere of your providence to bring back to the blessing, three blessings to the all people. Please guide us, we are listening to your word so that we can understand what we can progress goodness around us. Please guide our pastor, can give us a hint and we can develop and we can digest your word and understanding and uh, to be with it and uh, we can create goodness around us. Please bless this time and uh, we ask you the help each of us can understand. Thank you very much. We report in the name of Lama and Tamiko Montanaro, blessed Central family. Aju, amen. Thank you. Please sit there. Welcome our Pastor Montanaro. Hi, everybody. Hi. Hello. Hi. So, uh, I reflecting on how I give sermons, I think. I like to make sure that I justify each of my positions with some logic or biblical quote or something, some anecdote. And so I get very detailed. And sometimes I think it may be hard for people to really see the main point I'm making because I'm so getting into detail about it, you know, like filling in all the dots like this, you know, so it's more detailed. But I'd like to start with just saying two things that I want to share today, just to state them outright. Firstly, when we look at the arc of a man's life, you can tell something, right? If, if you are a physics student, you know this, that it's called trajectory. In physics, we talk about trajectory. That if you shoot a rocket, and you see the trajectory of the rocket, and you only see the last 100 yard, miles or so, you can tell where the rocket was fired from. You can just follow the trajectory. You can tell the speed, the arc, the angle, and you can trace it back to its origin. Mm -hmm. uh, if you see a baseball that comes flying in and lands, boom, right here, and you can trace, you know, see the arc of the last hundred feet or so, you can tell where it came from mm -hmm. by physics. You can actually show the arc and the angle and the speed and the height and everything and how fast it was falling at the time it landed, so how high it went, where the peak of its arc was, and where it started. Father's life is an arc. When you look at a, the life of a, of a man or a woman, you can see an arc. And, I, and I, I'm saying this because there are some people both in our movement now and out of our movement, who have criticized Reverend Moon for his um, relationships with women in the 1950s and 60s that made a foundation for the blessing. And there, there's not much spoken about this. We don't know any details, actually. But we do know that there were a certain number of women that were like the, the circle, the, the circle of women around whom... Um, father built the foundation for the blessing. And our members have struggled with this, and all, what I want to just say straight up is this, the conclusion. When you look like my wife prayed, father's life, and we lived with father for 30, 40 years. I watched father for 30 or 40 years. You could never meet someone who was living for the sake of others more than father. He was the most unselfish, giving, and sacrificial person that you would ever meet. He went to bed every night after speaking and teaching all day to members. And then he would wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning and do individual prayer by himself and do calisthenics to strengthen his body so that he could live a long time, so he could do his mission. He did an hour of exercise every day. 
And then he woke, he would pray, seriously pray to God in tears. And I had the opportunity to hear his prayer. I've never seen Father pray without tears. He would burst into tears as soon as he started praying. How can someone like that, how can that arc, when you see that's the last 30 years of his life, 40 years of his life that I saw. I saw the last 32 years of his life. How can that arc come from a, a, um, a beginning of debauchery and, and selfish love and, and playboy and, you know, some nonsense like this? It's just nonsense. And why would anyone follow such an evil man if he were that evil? Why would anyone follow him? His life from beginning to end was an offering to God. He loved those women as an offering. Many men say that they are reluctant to even get married once. Right? Yes, true. Men are afraid of getting married. The, the, the commitment, the responsibility. Yes, true. Father restored 12 women before his marriage. He restored 12 women with love so that they would believe again in love and truth and marriage. They all stayed in the movement, all these women. None of them left. None of them accused Father. That, that alone proves that he was the Messiah because only the Messiah could do that. And our members are doubting Father. And outside people are accusing Him. But they're not looking at the data, the facts, the arc of a man's life. You can't see 30 years of a man's life and conclude that the beginning is, is, is selfish and debauchery and, and licentious and, you know, full of sin, lustful. He was not a lustful man, but he loved. So if you say that lust is, the root of lust is love, that love gone wrong, then Father was love gone right. So he had a lust for life, a passion for life that I've never seen in anyone else. So if you, if you take just that aspect, of his passion for life, and look at the way he loved women, then you would say, oh, he's lustful. You see, by, by limiting your vision, you can say yes. But he was passionate about everything, and he lived his life with a passion and a joy and an offering to God and a self-sacrifice that I've never seen anywhere else. So through his passion for life and love, he loved women so strongly that women were willing to give up their lives for father. Many of those women were beaten, actually, by their fathers or husbands or, or sons or brothers because they were willing to follow father at the risk of their lives. Koreans had never before seen such a phenomenon. And Koreans are passionate people. But they'd never seen such a phenomenon. They couldn't understand it. So I want you to think again about Reverend Moon, the arc of his life. Study his life, his whole life. Don't listen to accusations. And if you're a member, you should be ashamed of yourself. You should be ashamed of yourself. Because you had a chance to see Father and live with Father. And you know who he was. Okay, and that leads me to the second point I wanted to share about controversy. Last week, we talked about global warming. Actually, we didn't talk about global warming the way that most um, of we hear it in the news, where people are trying to talk about um, the earth is heating up, although we've had the coldest winters in record the last two winters, so I don't know who's getting heated up. We're not. But anyway, now they're changing it to climate change because they, they, don't, they can't predict what, how it's going to go. Maybe it'll get colder or warmer. They don't know. Anyway, uh, we talked about 
Father, actually, in Jesus. And we talked about the quote in Luke 12, um, I think it's 1239, where Jesus says, I came to cast fire on the earth, would that it were already kindled. I wish it were already kindled. And we talked about Jesus was not an arsonist. Father was not an arsonist. They, had, they, they were casting fire of truth and love. And they wanted to heat up the frozen cold hearts of fallen men. But we talked about how Father, though he tried to spread his nets far and wide and bring everybody in and heat everybody up. He's one man, so he has to speak to one person at a time or maybe one group of people at a time, right? He, he spoke in Madison Square Garden in 1974 to a pack, 25,000 people came to hear him speak. He spoke at Washington Monument in 1976, 300,000 people came to hear him speak. So he tried to reach the, through the media, he tried to reach all of America and all of the world so that everybody would get hit with his words, and hopefully nobody would get burned. But everyone would be warmed up. But inevitably, some people get too close to the fire, and they got burned. Ah, remember when it was hot, passion, on fire, like Jesus. And like Jesus, some people hated him. Enough to kill him. Right? I mean, Jesus was murdered. Yeah. So, if you think about that, some people must have hated him. How can you hate the Messiah? Think about that. How can you hate the Messiah? Here comes the Messiah, you're hating him? Enough to kill him? That's pretty weird, isn't it? People actually hated Jesus. Some people loved him, but other people hated him. Same thing with Father. Some people loved Father, and other people hated him. There's been no one in history, including Jesus, who was hated more than Father. So that should give you some idea that he was the Messiah. No one's been hated as much. By communists and Christians and atheists and religious people, by rich people and by everybody. But he's also been loved. Father wasn't afraid of controversy. Controversy meant that something he had said made people angry. Mm -hmm. And sometimes to heat someone up, you have to make them angry. Anger is kind of fire, right? When people get fiery, they get angry, irate, right? It means that they're actually on fire. They're, ooh, that makes me so angry, right? And people got angry at Father and at Jesus. Controversy is inevitable when you bring truth and love into a situation where there has been lies and deceit and falsehoods and false love and lust and self-centered love and self-centered behavior. When you bring love and truth into that situation, Everyone feels judged. Everyone feels judged. And whether you can handle that or not is not the Messiah's responsibility. He can't determine the reaction to his words and his love. But he has to give his words and love. And I want to talk finally about this idea about casting your net you know, there's an area of garbage floating around in the Pacific Ocean the size of Texas. Have you heard about this? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's like plastic. It's floating. Mm -hmm. And all these countries, especially China and the United States, but mostly China and, you know, a Asian countries have been polluting, throwing garbage in the ocean. And some of it sinks to the bottom, metal and things like that. But other things float on the surface. And all these plastic bags and plastic especially an area the size of Texas has been swirling because the ocean currents have forced it into a circle. Mm -hmm. like, like when you have a circle, like a whirlpool. So there's this floating wad of plastic garbage the size of Texas in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. And they're trying to figure out how to get rid of it. 
maybe they've got a bacteria now that can eat plastic, so they're hoping that if they spray it with that, that it could, you know, consume the plastic or something. But who knows what that'll do to the environment or something, you know, anyway. But imagine you wanted to throw a net and catch the whole thing and pull it, right? They're trying to pull it out of, of the ocean and then they can process it. Maybe throw it in the landfill, right? Probably. But anyway, so that this plastic, they're trying to get it out of the ocean, say. So they throw a net and cover the whole thing. Can you pull an area the size of Texas easily, quickly? Can you go from zero miles an hour to 10 miles an hour like that? This is an area the size of Texas. If you can go a centimeter at an hour, you know, an inch an hour, that would be amazing if you can pull it that fast. This is an analogy I'm making for Father's work. He couldn't heat up the whole world at one time. It's hard. He can't just go from frozen to warm, from minus 30 degrees Fahrenheit to 78 degrees Fahrenheit in one lifetime. Neither could Jesus. But their goal is to warm up the earth, to pull everybody out of hell. But he couldn't pull that net that fast. He was pulling as hard as he could. And that's where the arc of his life comes in. If you look at Father's arc, you see that his whole life was spent pulling. You can see it in his words, in his heart. Everything he did was spent sharing the truth, teaching, loving, inspiring, crying, working, so that people would be inspired to change. But we didn't see the world change that much, it seems. Actually, it did. If you look at the last hundred years, if you look at between 1920, when Father was born, and now, almost 100 years later, we saw a world at the, in 1920 that had just fought the worst world war in history. Millions died, killing each other. France and England were carving up territory in Africa and Asia for colonies. Germany had wanted a piece of the action. That's why they started the war, really. All these alliances with Russia and France and everything created uh, the world war. They, they were so arrogant, they thought it would be over in a few minutes and it would be just done. But they got into trench warfare and murdering each other with new weapons like machine guns and chemical warfare like gas, mustard gas and other things. All these horrible weapons murdering each other. This was what had happened. Five times more people were injured than killed, so you have crippled people. In the movie of Chariots of Fire, you see the beginning of the movie of Chariots of Fire is the end of World War I. And you see people welcoming the, the, uh, the, the new students at Cambridge. I think they were Cambridge or Oxford, um, the Jewish runner. And as they were coming off the train station, there were people with these mechanical things covering their face because their eyes had been blown off or their face had been disfigured. And they were the victims of World War I. And they, they're talking to each other, and they're both crippled. And they say, well, that's what we fought the bloody war for, you know, those kids, so they could have an education. And there was a lot of bitterness there. But then World War II was just looming on the horizon. France and England were beating up on Germany for what they did and not forgiving them. The German currency went sky high. Hitler comes to power because he's promising he refuses to pay the war debt anymore. He refuses to, he builds up the military. He tries to bring uh, Deutschland über alles, Deutschland, Germany overall. And he's, and he's welcomed as a hero by the German people to get out of depression. America's not in the depression though. America's having the roaring 20s, flappers and dancing and having a good time. But in 1929, October 29th, the stock market crashes and America loses everything too. And we go into the Great Depression. The whole world is depressed. People are starving around the world. We've come a long way from countries that are willing to kill each other en masse. And then Father is just 
19 years old when World War II breaks out. His country is under Japanese occupation. Japan is allied with Hitler and Mussolini and the Axis powers of World War II. Japan is killing 30 million people in Korea, in China, in the Philippines. This is unheard of slaughter going on. Stalin is allied with Hitler, actually, in the beginning of the war. And then when Hitler attacks him in 1942, then Stalin goes to war, war against Hitler. But the communists are worse than the, the Nazis. And this is the middle of the purging that Stalin is doing. But all the leftists in America are, are lauding Stalin as a hero. But actually, under communism, 70 million, minimum 70 million people were killed by Stalin under, in the purges and in the, in the horrible things that he was doing, worse than Hitler. So what a century of murder. Actually, we're at relative peace right now. In the 70s, nine nations fell to communism under Carter. Pol Pot killed two to three million of his own countrymen in just two years. Mountains of bones. Anyone who had glasses was killed because they had studied. So we're looking at a century, the 20th century, with more murder, more bloodshed, more war, more suffering than any century in human history before that. And Father educated through that century until the point where by the end of his life, in the 1990s and in 2000, Father passed away in 2012, our movement had shown how international, interracial, interreligious marriage could be a good thing. And now we see black and white and Asian and Western marriages all over the place. It was unheard of in the 1960s when Father started. And we see young people who really genuinely want to see a world of peace and are internationally educated through the internet. We have friends and we have connections overseas. We have friends and connections in Asia, in Africa, in Italy, in Europe. Not just our family, I mean, I mean everybody does. The internet has made it so we see all the suffering immediately. So everyone thinks there's more suffering going on. But actually, statistically speaking, the last 20 years has been the most peaceful time in human history in terms of the number of people dying in war, in any kind of war. Father's life made a difference. People are more aware, more conscious. God was working His providence, but it takes time. It takes time. And we get impatient with God. Hey, God, come on. Speed up the providence, you know. Let's get with it. Save the world. But God is saving the world by educating the world. By teaching us how to live the right way. Because we want to. Not because we have to, but because we want to. And that is slow. But it's changing. People are changing. There's a lot of conflict still politically, but we are fighting about important issues. Abortion. When does life start? In the womb or before or when? Is it right to kill a fetus or not? These kinds of issues. How do we conduct ourselves sexually? Is it right to just do whatever we want? Are there consequences? Do we... Do we have a spirit or not? Is sex, are we just animals? Then that means we can have sex with whoever we want, whenever we want. Or are we something different than animals that have an eternal spirit? And that eternal spirit needs eternal meaning in relationship. Eternal connection. Animals don't have that kind of spirit, maybe. So yeah, they can hook up. And they do. Dogs have sex with whoever's in heat. Are we the same as dogs? Should we have sex with whoever's in heat? If a woman's horny, should we just have sex with her? If a man's horny, should he have sex with whoever lets him? Are we dogs? Are we? 
Do we have a spirit? That's an important question. We have to answer these important questions so that everyone is satisfied and understands that there are real consequences for our actions. Maybe not in the physical world, but in the spiritual world. And we live in both the physical and spirit world at the same time. We have a spiritual nature and a physical nature. So these are important questions. And worldwide also. Look at Islam. Islam is freaking out. Because the modern age is pushing Islam to change faster than it wants to change. Islam does not want to enter this, the Christian age. Because it sees Christianity as the enemy. And it believes that Christianity is blasphemous. It believes that you should not say that Jesus is the Son of God. Christi it believes that God had no sons. Islam believes, the Quran believes that God had no sons. And that to say that Jesus was the Son of God is blasphemous. And to worship Jesus as God is idolatry. They believe in Jesus as a prophet, but they don't believe he was the Son of God. They don't believe anyone can be the Son of God. Also, they're kind of like an Old Testament-style religion, like the, the Jewish religion before Jesus. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Kind of legalistic, law-based. So it's very scary for them to come into contact with the Christian culture, which is a very different culture, which teaches that Faith in God and Christ is enough for salvation and that Jesus is the Son of God and we're all supposed to be children of God. It's a very different religious view. And the more radical elements of Islam are taking it to war, the jihad. But I believe that there are moderate and, and um, liberal elements of Islam that don't have much power in politically maybe, but they are very numerous. And those people don't like the jihadists. And ultimately, I think through religious dialogue, we can come to a higher level. And Father inspired a lot of religious dialogue. That was one of his activities was trying to create dialogue between Islam, Judaism, and Christianity. The three religions of the book, meaning the, the scriptures. Starting, all three religions of Christianity, Islam, and Judaism believe in Abraham. Mm -hmm. Abraham is the father of Ishmael, who is the father of the Arabic people. So Muhammad and the Quran traced their lineage back to Abraham through Ishmael. Christianity and Judaism traced their lineage back to Abraham through Isaac. So they're actually stepbrothers. Islam and Judaism are stepbrothers. And Christianity is like the son of Judaism, kind of. So, these are three related religions killing each other. In the Middle East and other elsewhere. But I believe that that can be solved. But it has to be solved by a higher truth. Christianity cannot insist on its own teaching and solve the problem with Islam. Islam cannot insist on its own teaching and solve the problem with Christianity. Father brought a teaching the divine principle, high enough to unite Christianity and Islam. And many religious leaders are now studying that teaching. So I believe there's great hope, but it takes time. And finally, I want to say this last thing, and then I want to ask my wife if she wants to share something. When you pray, Personally, I want to bring this to a personal level. When you pray to God, does God hear you? Can God answer your prayers? Can the center of the universe listen to one person? Can the center, the creator of the universe, answer your prayers? If God is going to go this slow, what value does it have to pray? Why should I pray? Who is God? He's not seeming to interrupt anything. He's not intervening. He's not interrupting our evil activities. He's just providing truth and love. Oh, big deal. 
But actually, that's incredibly respectful of God. God is the most respectful being. You know, Lenin, the, who was the beginning of Stalin and all that evil in Russia, he said, the end justifies the means. That means whatever we have to do to get where we want to go is fine. Murder, killing, starvation of people, it's all okay as long as we get where we want to go. But we know that that's not true. The end does not justify the means. You have to get where you're going by living the way that you should live all the time. You have to establish your character, and that should get you where you want to go. And that means that God is showing a really good example. He's respecting us so much. He's letting us live in evil as long as we want to. He's providing truth and love, but he's letting us live in evil if we want to. Do you want it? Do you want to live in evil? The Messiah came. He's been teaching until he died at 92 years old. Jesus came before that. Are you listening? Are you trying to follow? That's what prayer can do. Prayer can turn you, go from zero to hero. Prayer can help you go from zero to hero. Through prayer, you can connect to that God that Father loved and connected to, that Jesus loved and connected to. Through prayer, you can connect to that God, and gradually you will become a part of the solution instead of part of the problem. You'll become a mini Messiah. The sky is the limit. God does not limit how high you can go, how much you can do for mankind. God is not going to limit that. The only limit is your desire, your passion, your energy, your focus, your determination, your prayer. But Father has shown that the sky is the limit. We can become perfect in our lifetimes. We can become perfect and we can help our children to become perfect and our grandchildren, and this world can be led by good people. So Father doesn't need to be here anymore for this world to reach perfection. Each one of us can pray and connect to God passionately, and then we'll hear the voice of God. God will speak to you. I have heard God's voice. I hear God's voice every day. Whenever I want to talk to God, God speaks to me. I don't always want to talk to God because his words to me will always be true, will always be pushing me to become a better person. Sometimes I'm just lazy. Sometimes I'm still habitually doing evil or selfish things. But God always is there loving and giving truth and love. How wonderful is God. God will speak to you. You will hear God's voice. And you will know that you're not alone in the universe. So on a very personal level, going from depression and even suicidal thoughts, which many young people face, to the point where you accept yourself and you understand that you're part of a process of growth, to the point where you're excited about living and you want to give something to others, to the point where you finally are actually taking responsibility, not just for yourself, but for a family, for a husband, for a wife, for children, for the community you live in, for the nation you live in. That's the course we have to go. And God will help you every step of the way. So that's why you should pray. And then maybe if we're swimming in that sea and Father's pulling us with his net, Instead of being a hunk of garbage that's just lying there getting pulled by the Messiah, you can start swimming toward the Messiah and you can actually help push that rope, that net. You can grab that net and start to push it in the same direction the Messiah is going. And if enough people do that, that thing will start to speed up. And finally, yes, we can get rid of that garbage. So please pray every day. That's my conclusion then. If you want to help 
You can make the arc of your life beautiful. You can help Father with that net, pulling it in. Connect to God. Pray to God every day. Pray to God every minute. Pray without ceasing, the Bible says. Okay? Does that sound good? Will you do it? If you want to do that, raise your hands, both your hands in the air. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, thank you. So, Oma, what do you want to say about it? <clears throat> you just uh, I thought about the father giving the introduction of the divine principle as a truly that the woman was the raped and uh, give birth to uh, children and then this woman uh, didn't know, but mother didn't tell, and um, certain age, probably teen age, she heard from other person, and then she she wept. She didn't know the past why she typically the, came to this house, and she prayed a lot crying, crying, and find it to, because that kind of situation, you came in this earth, you don't feel that any meaning, meaningful, and uh, you are the good person. But uh, she asked God, why I came here? What purpose to live? And then God told the same exactly father talking about introduction. You born ke ke came this earth. The I created you with love, but the, the mistake of love made the contradiction in your, in your heart. We have living in the good and the evil. But you have a choice if you want to live good to live in for sake of others, or you can live just on your sake, or you are hiding, or you ended up yourself in the murder in yourself. You have a choice. And then she she cried again and then she determined even though came this us in this circumstance, I want to live with goodness, with your, your word. Through the God's word, give us strength to that the, our original heart and mind was the good. And, um, you know, you didn't have anything, the word make you feel good. The God is always to encourage us to be good and loving and the, the compassion to other people. But if you read that word or commandment, you you will you will be feeling no meaning to live this world. And then die or, or doing like taking too much drug or taking that uh, drink you shouldn't drink and then lose control that you're conscious, and then you destroy yourself, you know? Or drug, and taking drug too much, you, your mind couldn't do the, the normal. You can choose wrong things and then become karma. The many generation of the, the uh, woman is, is no, no ability to really taking care of yourself or other and then lose hope and then even die, you know. But this woman is choose the God's word and study the uh, Bible and then she become the pastor of the church.
and then now this is the creating the, the uh, business for this the woman is very weak and then uh, don't um, as much the hope but she's encouraged this woman can be that the take responsibility in the, their life to be right to live and then um, you know uh, people become that the, uh, successful become a doctor or become other the professor to the other college or the, the common people the working hard and the, the successful business uh, supporting community and this this um, is very important uh, you choose you choose that the, the, um, your your ability to choose the good and uh, in, in you know encourage other people to live good also through, through that the more the, the heavily fortune and heavily the power coming through and heal the people's heart and uh, you know America now that I had that so many drug abuse and then people you know because of so much pain they they couldn't get treated to some time uh, the medicine was too expensive or, or the family situation was very serious and then they took their life or, or you know planning to die you know that's very serious time here in the history people people take drug and then abused and then die uh, and you know it's not normal right now in the america and the world you know um, but uh, we hope people can choose good and uh, living for sake of other, make some, you know, not just yourself. To, you, you have some kind of difficulty, but if you're looking at just the focus, the point, you never get out that. That's why we have to forget yourself and then helping others. Through helping others, you can gain the happiness and joy you can share with other people. Through that, you can change, change your, your life and change other people. If you saw the, the goodness around them, the even bad situation will change. Just I recommend it that the true father to teach is very deep and wide. Sometimes you cannot understand. Takes time. Take digest the word, what mean for me to understand. And take a time to pray. Take a time to read, simply, simply read, and then receive it. Receive it, and next step is uh, to the, uh, understand and digest the word, and then the, the something gain yourself in, in your heart, and then to activate, and then act, you know. Just a simple word, living for sake of other, or loving other, it's so hard. Because sometimes, if you loving the freely, people misunderstand and they accuse you. You not you not good to loving. You don't understand me, and they accuse you. You know, but I still have a hope. I understand you you yourself in the difficult situation, but not just by yourself. If you understand that I'm not by myself, that is it's understanding, it changed the life. Because we are together to overcome this difficulty. Okay. Okay, so that's our words for the week. Um, I'm playing with the title of our Sunday time. Um, I think I'm calling it now my, our Sunday ceremony to attend God and share and sharing His Word. Ceremony of attendance to God and sharing of His Word. Because we're attending God, but we're also sharing His Word. And God gives me words when I speak to Him. Every morning when I speak to Him, God gives me words. 
And I, I'm so excited to be able to share them with people because I know they're true. And whenever you share truth with people, it helps them. So you should pray every day as you can share God's word with people too. Because God will give you words that you can share with people in your life. Okay? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I want to thank you so much for being here with us. You are wonderful. You're a champion, Father. You are sacrificial and giving and wonderful, and you're the best, Father. And we pray that we can emulate you, your example, follow your example, Father, that we can build our lives based on what you've taught us. You're showing the best example, Father, of being a patient, loving parent, and I know that when we all come to understand why you have allowed so many years to pass without intervening, without interrupting our evil, but just by sending good people, by inspiring people with your word and with vision and with heart, we will come to understand, Father, that you put the responsibility in our hands to lead and guide and our own lives and the, and the world around us. I pray that we can take care of this world, Father, that we can fight with love against evil and change evil into goodness and change this world into a good world so that you can see your own nature reflected, Father, in this beautiful world that you created, especially in humankind, Father, which has never really reflected your beautiful nature, even though we were created as your children. I ask your blessing on this day. Please be with everyone at home who's listening online and let them be inspired to pray to you and hear your word. I ask your blessing, and we offer everything. Thank you so much. 축복 중심 가정, 라만과 타미코 모타는 이름으로 보고 드립니다. 아주. We offer this report in the name of Raman and Tamiko Montanaro, a blessed central family. Amen. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.